Hello, listeners. Jordan here. I just want to let you know that you can listen to Nighttime early and ad-free on Amazon Music. Include it with Prime. Hello, listeners. Before we start, let me have a quick moment to put some gift-giving ideas in your ear. For many of us, Christmas is inching ever closer, and with it, the burning desire to buy material goods for our loved ones, our liked ones, and our otherwise connected people. Now, rather than going down to Walmart and buying some plastic monument to pointlessness, visit the Nighttime store and check out our selection. We have shirts, hoodies, mugs, stickers. There's a variety of styles, sizes, and colors. And aside from making you look awesome, Every purchase will help fund the creation of the show. So if you want to scratch someone off your list, go to nighttimepodcast.com and visit the store. I just added some Christmas-themed designs for you to consider. Again, they're at nighttimepodcast.com and click on the store. Now, let's get to the episode. You are listening to the Nighttime Podcast. Hello, listeners, and welcome to the 11th volume of Nighttime's listener-led Encounters with Creep series. If you haven't heard the prior episodes in this series, let me get you caught up. A long time ago, I asked Nighttime listeners to share some stories of unpleasant experiences with people they consider to be creeps. The response was a tidal wave of cringe-inducing and concerning stories. And to be fair, the waves of these stories have not stopped. They seem to be endless, and as they come, Madeleine Klein and I have been doing our best to make some sense of them. And tonight, we're going to present the next batch. It's the 11th volume of listener-contributed Encounters with Creeps. We got two creeps at a car rental agency, a creep in the bushes with some stolen underwear, a creep breaking into cars outside of a Cape Breton Screaming Eagles game, and well, there's a whole bunch more. So let's not waste any time. Let's get into the 11th volume of Encounters with Creeps. Ms. Madeleine Klein, it's a, uh, you're on borrowed time as a, uh, unparent. Oh yeah, a little bit. It's like, I, I still have technically like four weeks, but every day I'm like, it could be any day. <laughs> yeah, it could be any day, but, uh, yeah. what's going on with you? What's new? How are you? Uh, I'm great. Um, as you can see, I'm in my new space. And it's gorgeous. Oh, it feels so good. My house is slowly but surely coming together where we are almost ready to uh, bring a child home. Um, but yeah, tonight tonight is not only special because of the fabulous new space, but uh, it's, our, it's our anniversary. It's our one year anniversary. Tomorrow is the one year anniversary of us doing our very first stream together. Are you serious? How did you know that? It is. Uh, well, it's my one of my best friend's birthdays. Okay. Tomorrow. So wow. it's, it kind of, yeah. And I just remember last year, November 17th was our first stream. We did wow. Tamara Keepness. That's crazy. I feel like so. I've known you. Like the way time's all messy, but I feel like I've known you for years. I agree. Hmm. I, I, I totally, we, yeah. We spend a lot of time talking on and off the show. So I guess we've we've done a, a year of friendship um, to the max. Absolutely. So that's I, oft I often call you bestie. <laughs> yeah. And I'm often annoyed by you the way I am my other best friends. Oh, I'm honored. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, that's cool. One year. Congrats. I'm happy to have you as I tell you all the time. And I'm always thrilled to be here. Uh, before we start getting into our discussion, uh, there is some suggestion that the door in your new office space could potentially be haunted. Do you want to talk about any reason why that door could be haunted? Well, it's from an old nunnery that was shut down and is now being converted into condos. Mm -hmm. So, and it's, and you made the connection that it kind of looks like a door from what is it? Night, Night of the, the Living, Living Dead? Yeah, it does remind me of a door I saw in Night of the Living Dead. It's a very old wooden door that's just over your, I guess, left shoulder. Um, coming from a nunnery, like it's probably like an old church. I don't, yeah, I don't know. If anything weird well, happens also, in that room, though, keep me up to date. This, this nunnery, do you want to know what it was called? It Please. was called Sisters of the Precious Blood. Oh, my God. That sounds Who like something. The nunnery back. <laughs> yeah, sisters of the precious blood. Wow, right? that is freaky. 
So yeah. that is some like Martinsville stuff. Yes, totally. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, so you have an aged door from the nunnery at the Sisters of the Precious Blood in your recording space. Perfect. Yeah. So <laughs> nothing's happened yet, but I'll keep you updated. Yeah, but we're at the beginning of the night, so who knows where it's going to lead. Uh, if the if the door isn't going to ha haunt your space, the stories that we get into tonight on on Encounters with Creeps Volume 11 is certainly going to foul the air in that place. We have uh, we have some wild ones, including one of the wildest um, modern day meet, uh, in the news creep stories. You know how I often like to start these episodes with the story of a creep who has found his or her way into Canadian media, right? Yes. Well, let me tell you about a creep that's in the news. And this one is a trip. I wonder if you've heard about this because it's not being widely reported, oddly enough. Uh, the headline for an article in the Durham Post, that's a Durham Post is like a news site in Durham, Ontario. So small town, Ontario. The headline is community worries over feces eater asking for contact with minor. So that's something already. Listen to this. A man has reportedly been approaching women on social media, asking them to sell him their feces as well as provide human waste from younger sisters. A citizen was concerned enough to have reported the matter to the police who seemed to take the social media post very seriously. Now they're, um, uh, they're quoting a social media post, a Facebook post someone made. Hey everybody, I just got back from spending 45 minutes with an officer at the police station. They're taking this very seriously. Said, said a post from one of the people who allegedly reported the man. The police are, and now quoting her again, mainly interested in the fact that he was looking to contact a minor female, the woman citizen added. Residents say this disturbing individual is originally from the Durham region as ha and has announced his intention to return to the area. He has been allegedly messaging women on Facebook Marketplace, asking them if they will sell their poop to him so he can eat it, and offering money in exchange. Now, the article also includes a couple screenshots. So before you re react, here's the, you know, you probably sold something on Facebook Marketplace. And if you're selling like, I don't know, women's clothing or something, I'm not surprised you get a creep writing you. But this is the message they received from this man. So they listed something for sale on Facebook Marketplace. And the response is, I think they were selling shoes. The response they got in this message is, hi, I'm wondering if you might be interested in selling me your feces. It could be in a container or something like that. I know this sounds odd, so no worries if you're not interested. And he then follows up with, I would pay you between $150 to $200 each time you give me some, if that works for you. Is this creepy? This is, <laughs> like, this is so creepy only because there's there's a time and a place for fetishes and kinks. Okay. And it's not Facebook Marketplace. <laughs> it certainly isn't. That's actually, as I was planning to bring this up with you, I'm thinking, like, are we kink shaming? But then I thought... We're kink, sh we're kink asking why. Yeah. <laughs> that's, but, that's all we're doing. <laughs> yeah. But if you're, if you're into this in the, in the privacy of your own home with like-minded people, I, I guess it's not illegal. It's certainly not healthy, but when you're I was writing just gonna random say, this people. This isn't illegal, but it sounds like it should be. <laughs> yeah. Well, here's the part that crosses the line. The person who he wrote to, uh, it seems like they were maybe playing with him a little bit and writing back. How could you uh, not? They said, is it porch pickup? Question mark. So they're probably <laughs> screwing with him. He writes, do you have a younger sister? And the person writes, why? And he says, I'm just curious. And then they say, I do, but she's underage. And then he responds with, can you send me a pic of them? And that's the last message, because after that is when they went to the police. Thus, See, now, now we're this. crossing over to illegal. Yeah. Like requests yeah, yeah. so it, it seems like that exchange happened she went to the police reported it and then went home and made a post on social media explaining what happened and that post kind of went viral in that area so i just like i'm torn i could use 200 bucks but it is still creepy <laughs> <laughs> yeah well i'll tell you it's way creepier than it sounds because i went down a bit of a rabbit hole 
reading oh, no. about this person and it seems to be not the first time they wrote strange messages like this to people so it's uh like there are websites for this purpose yeah. so i don't know why he's he, this is and that's what makes it creepy is because he's not taking the right channel yeah i just hate facebook marketplace and it's like oh stuff like this is the reason why but this is very <clears throat> extreme uh that is a, a creep in the news um certainly a creep objectively a creep but we have several other creep stories to go over tonight that were contributed to us by listeners of Nighttime and the Encounters with Creeps series. And on a couple of them, the jury is out, so we will need to decide if they are all creep stories. But I will tell you, all of these stories that we'll hear tonight are certainly creepy. And, and I can kind of break them down into themes. We have a section of creep encounter stories that involve a workplace. There's, in fact, there's two set in a, Always. In a, in a car rental agency. Uh, we have one at a makeup store and one who's just a generic creep at an office job. Separate to that, we have the story of an underwear thief. We have the story of someone who gets drugged on vacation. We're going to hear about a texty thief in Sydney, Nova Scotia. Which will, that's not much of a tease, but it's a good one. And we're going to hear a theory on the soup creep from volume nine of this series. But we'll save that for a little later. Okay. D did any of those ring a bell, or did any of those uh, tickle your fancy or blow your skirt up in your language? <laughs> we'll uh, we'll start with the with the workplace creeps. These are always good. Okay. There's a lot. Oh man, these are low. I, I listened to them earlier, so I'm getting excited just with the thought of them. But yeah, let's start with the two part one that I told you about uh, that involves. Uh, it's uh, the encounterer who encountered this creep. Her name is Karina and she works or worked at a car rental agency. And she sent us a two part story that is very cool. Let's start with the creepy car renter that she encountered. Hey Jordan, uh, my name is Karina and I'm calling from the US. Um, I'm not sure if you're still doing the Encounters with Creeps series. But I just listened to episode three and um, two stories came to mind. These both happened at uh, a car rental agency that I used to work for. Um, so working in car rental, you meet all different kinds of people from all different walks of life. And anyone who's worked in that industry at the branches, they'll tell you that um, sometimes your most loyal customers um, you might think that they're engaging in some maybe illicit activity, um, but if you don't have any proof and they pay on time, you just do what you gotta do. So one of these particular customers, he was a regular, um, and this branch that I worked at at the time, I was the only woman inside the branch, so he would always ask to deal with me. He didn't wanna deal with anyone else. And every time he would say really inappropriate things to me and just comment on my appearance every time and try to flirt with me. And I just wanted to, you know, write the contract, give him the keys and get him out of the store as fast as possible. So I kind of just always dealt with it. Um, and in this, at this time, I was not technically the acting, I was technically the acting assistant manager. I wasn't really the assistant manager, but so I kind of had um, all my subordinates, quote unquote, were men. And um, this particular interaction I had with this particular customer, um, he told me that he wanted to give me a tattoo on the inside. And, you know, I don't really know what that means. I guess I can understand what he's trying to imply, but it just really, really, really got to me. And what made it worse is that at the time when he said this, all of my subordinates were sitting behind me and they all laughed. They all thought it was so funny and I, it made me so angry. And so I yelled and screamed at him and <laughs> he had already signed the contract. So I just threw the keys at him and told him to get the F out of my store. Um, and then the next time he came in, he asked me if I was dating anyone and I told him yes. And then he apologized. And it was really interesting to me that like, he felt like he was disrespecting another man once he found out that I quote unquote belonged to one, but he didn't have a problem disrespecting me. 
So we're going to pause it there because this is a two part story. But let's let's dissect what we heard so far. First of all, I don't get the the comment he made to her. So I guess maybe he's a tattoo artist or something, but I don't get what he said to her as being derogatory. It just seems like it doesn't make any sense. I took it as extremely vulgar and sexual. Did you? I took it as like an ejaculation joke. Okay. Joke, I guess in it, it just seems yeah, joke in quotations, <clears throat> but it's if that is what it is, it's raunchy, but it's like it does it's not really like create like and it, clever it also, or anything. Like doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's but. just like a, it's like, oh, you're like an idiot and gross. Yeah, exactly. Um <laughs> Okay. I, I was think I, I was thinking it through leading up to this. I'm like, I, I, anything can kind of sound derogatory if it's said in the right way. So maybe I'd need to hear him say it. Be like, oh, he mean like. But as I heard him say, I don't, I don't get that. Um, the employees around her, uh, her subordinates, so people under her. If someone made a raunchy joke at my boss, I certainly wouldn't laugh. But that said, though, sometimes I do laugh in uncomfortable situations. So maybe I would have. I think there's there's a big difference between nervous laughter and like jovial laughter between men, I guess. Cuz she mm -hmm. said all of her all of her coworkers were men. Mm -hmm. So, I just I have this feeling that they weren't too quick on the uptake and didn't really figure out that that was extremely offensive. Ah. Oh. Mm -hmm. They also could have been like, well, that was the dumbest thing I've ever heard. So I hope the laughter was at him and not with him. Yeah, like, haha, you're pathetic and gross. R right? It exactly. way out of line. Like, this is a car rental agency, not like a sh crappy bar. I would, right? I would have liked to hope, I, I would like to hope, though, like, if, if that were me in that situation, that someone, male, female, or otherwise, would have stepped in and been like, can you not? Like mm -hmm. this is that's that's totally out of line. Yeah, but and it doesn't even need to like a lot of the stories we hear on this series. It's um, it's like people want to be nice, and that's kind of how the creeps get away with it. And and I don't think you need in every case to be like confrontational with stopping them. There's probably like I, I try to approach everything in this light way. I feel like if I was in that situation, I could diffuse it and let them know that it wasn't acceptable, but not do it in this harsh way. I think there would have been a light and kind of comedic way to get around that. I would I would have said something like this is without me thinking if I'm standing there and that happens. I could see myself say some, saying something like, well, that seems like an appropriate joke to say at the current rental agency in the afternoon. Yeah. It like, would, I'm it sarcastic, would so that's how I'd react. Yeah. Well, and you, like for me, I would want to embarrass him. Mm. So sarcasm could like work, so, like sh to shame him. Mm -hmm. And have the, him realize, like, mm, maybe I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> the problem is sarcasm, though. It's it's not everyone understands. Yeah, it. like you can be sarcastic and get someone, and it goes completely over their head, and they think, and they just think you're even more of an idiot because you said True. something. Like if they if you don't get sarcasm, it's like yeah. Um, I'm yeah, glad I don't know. that she reacted the way she did, though, even in that setting, because I often say that's one of the things I miss most about bartending is. Uh, well, the only thing I miss about working in a bar is if you can tell the customer to F off if you mm -hmm. if it's warranted mm -hmm. and your boss isn't going to do anything I like because her... it's a nightclub. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I liked her observation of uh, him being apologetic uh, when he felt like w maybe I he was disrespecting another guy by hitting on her the day before. If you want to call that hitting on her, I don't it, it's something it's almost like a. Um, a mix it's like catcalling but with a captive audience you know you catcall a woman walking on the street but if you corner her in her job and catcall to her face that's that's kind of what he did well and that's i just came to this realization in the last few years but like isn't it wild that a lot of the times because like i've lied about back in back in my younger days i've lied about having a boyfriend mm -hmm. But isn't that wild how m lots of men will, like, they won't take no for an answer until you say, I have a boyfriend. And then it's like, oh, well, then I need to respect him. Is it? Or are they just some, like, I don't want to get, my, I don't want to get my ass kicked over this. 
true <laughs> but yeah, yeah that's just that's wild instead of just taking no for an answer mm-hmm. well let's uh get to the second part of karina's story uh this this has an interesting worse? no uh well yes and no so okay. We heard how this whole situation plays out with her subordinates, all men surrounding uh, the or in, involved in the situation or witnessing it and laughing along. Perhaps maybe they didn't have the experience in life to um, realize what was happening was inappropriate and may have made Karina uncomfortable. So what happens only days later, just like the Taylor Swift song, Karma gets one of her coworkers. Listen to this. So the second story I have is from the same location, uh, just a couple months later. Um, one of the guys who had laughed at that joke, um, he was pretty new and he was really young, had just graduated from college. And I think this was his first job. Um, so I had sent him across the street and he was working at our satellite office where we would rent cars to customers at a dealership. He came back really quickly after I sent him over there to rent a car to a customer and he was really, really distressed. And he asked me if he could talk to me outside and he looked like just really upset. So we went outside, he said he wanted some privacy and the office is really small. So being outside was really the only place we could be alone. So um, he told me that, that the woman that he had rented a car to when he was walking her around the car, had asked him if he was single, he said yes. And then, you know, was he getting lunch soon? Did he maybe want to have lunch with her? And he said, you know, I, 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 Karina, I wasn't interested, but I didn't want to be mean. So I just said no. And then she point blank asked him, well, look, I just want to be honest with you. Uh, this is really crass, but she said, I just want to suck your dick. Oh God. So like, will you just do like, we can go behind the building and we can do that. And then I just didn't even, I I thought he was joking at first, but he looked so genuinely concerned and I just didn't know what to do or what to say because I'd never heard of anything like that before. Um, And he was just like, what do I do? Like, I mean, I wrote her the contract. I told her no. And then she just left. And I felt so bad for him because he was so, he looked so upset. And then he told me, he's like, you know, Karina, I laughed at you the other day when that happened. And now like, I understand how you feel because that was just, I felt so uncomfortable. So needless to say, a lot of these stories that we've heard on this particular series are men, but like women can be creepy too. That was so weird. I felt so bad for him to have to deal with that kind of interaction. That's how that ends. Oh my God. Where do we start with that? She's, <clears throat> and I like, I, I act like I'm a rough, tough cream puff all the time, but uh, <laughs> see, because I, my first initial thought was, welcome to the female experience, Junior. <laughs> like, this is, but he like realized it. He was like, you know, I laughed at you the other day, like sexual harassment, sexual harassment. Mm-hmm. That in, poor in, kid, like yeah. Oh. In both of these, are sort of like catcalling with a captive audience. We, we, I don't know if you rent cars often, but when you do, you, there's this part where you go outside and the person from the rental agency like kind of shows you the car and you know you make sure there's no damage on it. They give you the keys and you sign your contract and stuff. But it's you and the rental agency person like alone together, and that must be where she did this, and. I, I yeah why, I why can't would be... you ever like there's got to be a better if that's what you're going for why would you choose the car rental guy yeah well the, that's what I'm thinking of <laughs> listening to these two stories I never would have thought the car rental age, uh, industry is ripe with sexual harassment and this kind of no. madness. uh I, I wasn't surprised to hear stories set within uh, you know, the cleaning hotel industry, which we got into, I think, in volume 10 or volume nine. But the car rental right. agency, that's an untapped market for creep stories, it appears. I guess. And yeah, yeah, that's just baffling to me. Yeah. But I guess a lot of people who, well, 
any industry that has you rubbing elbows with the public, you're going to find some creeps. But a lot of people renting cars or like traveling away on business, uh, just weird people. Maybe they're like she suggested in her first message, the criminal element maybe rents cars. I know maybe. here in, in here in Halifax, um, car rental agencies came up in a prior series I did about the Halifax glove guy, which is a guy that was allegedly renting cars for years uh, around Halifax and using them at night to kind of pose as a pseudo taxi uh, as a way to either be a nice guy offering intoxicated young men rides home or maybe it was to stimulate a leather glove fetish one or the other but uh, I bet you the rental agencies know that guy if he's been you know in and out of rental agencies for years super but... yikes well now that you say that Clifford Olson rented cars did he so he was always in a different vehicle, so it was hard to hard to pinpoint what this loser was driving. So we heard two different stories there uh, set within the same location from the same storyteller. And it sounds like the same week. <laughs> what a <laughs> week at work. God. <laughs> I hope she got wine that Friday night after that. But um, are these are the uh, let's what's the verdict? Are they both creeps? Oh, it, 10 out of 10. Yeah, like, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, for sure. Oof, very inappropriate. Actually, and one of the like when we're presenting our findings in the jury of or, or in the courtroom of encounters with creeps, we can find them as a not creep due to misunderstanding. We can find them as a creep, which we just did. But there should be another kind of category that we can um, convict people of. And that's just being like a douchebag. Do you know what I mean by douchebag? Yes. Like, is that something people say in Saskatchewan? Oh, yeah. Okay. Because the next story, the reason I wanted to clear that up is the next story, I have, I'm scratching my head like, is this a creep or just a huge douchebag? And you listen to this and you, you tell me, this is a story set in a makeup store in Arkansas. This is what, this is Maddie's either creep or douchebag in an Arkansas makeup store. Hi, Jordan. Hi, Madeline. My name's Maddie. Um, I'm from Arkansas, and I love your podcast. I just wanted to share a quick little creep encounter with you. Um, so this happened between sophomore and junior year of college, so it's probably like 19. Um, and over the summers, I would work at this small like makeup store slash boutique in my hometown. Um, and the day that this happened, I was working with one other coworker. Um, I was in the back doing inventory or something like that, um, and I hear someone walk in the store, but I know my coworkers got it, so I just keep doing what I'm doing. I hear that it's a man, and he's asking for help getting a gift for, like, a fiancé or a wife or something, and then I didn't hear anything else. I hear someone else walk in the store, so I leave the back room to go help this other customer, and the man looks me up and down like a piece of meat when I come out and goes, wow, why were you hiding that beautiful face back there? And I was just trying to be nice and polite. So I was like, oh, thanks, whatever. I go and help this other customer. She's in and out in like five, 10 minutes. This man's been in here for like 20 minutes at this point, has not bought anything. I go over to help my coworker out because I can tell she's a little uncomfortable. And he is just blabbering on and on about how this is his third wife and he's so excited because she's so good in bed. He talks about how he cheated on his last wife. He talks about how he's so rich because, of course, he is. Um, and he told us he got rich because he used all his money to buy gold coins and then he buries them in his yard because he doesn't trust banks. Mind you, this man does look like a pirate, and that's very much pirate behavior, and now I just refer to him as a pirate, but <laughs> <laughs> side note. Anyway, during all this, he keeps looking over at me every now and then and just going, you are so beautiful. You need to be a model. I just, if I was your age, I would be all over that. Do you have a boyfriend? Does he treat you good? Is he good in bed? Like, ask me very personal questions that were making us all very uncomfortable. Um, and he was like, well, you know, if you ever get rid of your boyfriend, you know where to find me. And I was just, we're just trying to get him out of the store. He finally picks something, checks out, and I'm, we're like, thank goodness. I go to help another customer, thinking it's finally over. I have my back turned to the door. And as he's leaving, he yells, hey, look over here. And just, first of all, this store is very small. There's no reason to be yelling. But just out of instinct, I turn and look. 
and he looks at me and smiles and goes, ah, a picture perfect beauty. Don't ever change that. (laughs) And then leaves. It was very embarrassing and weird. And yeah, I still think about the pirate dude till this day. All right. Thanks. (laughs) (laughs) Pirate behavior was my favorite line out of that. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Well, but do you see what I mean? How it it wasn't overtly creepy. Other the worst, like bringing up with like a random young woman working at a makeup store is your boyfriend good in bed is definitely creepy. But to, to me, a part of that's he just comes across as this condescending, overly self confident old prick that I would yeah. consider just like a douchebag. Like just buy something to get out of giant here. Giant douche. Yeah, going like... on about how rich he is, and I can buy gold because I don't trust the banks. I'm smarter than that he sounds like a crypto dude mm. who i would steer clear of i i think he's older i i feel like he's just someone he's probably had three wives because it, it, they fall for his <laughs> nonsense and then they realize how ridiculous this guy is and they leave and he he's too overly self-confident to ever realize that he is the problem i can't believe he's found three women that have willfully married him not just dated him Mm -hmm. so that there's clearly women there are some women that are clearly easily fooled because there is nothing more unattractive than what maddie just described Mm -hmm. as this man Mm -hmm. like an overshare and an embellisher and like no one asked anyone any man with money doesn't flaunt it like that no no like no that's just oh yeah so i i don't know if i could decide creep or douchebag i'm thinking actually now that i listen back to the story i'm thinking like creepy douchebag yeah about uh about half creep but full-on douche Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um and that's not the last of our workplace creep stories one of my favorite callers she is a from the UK and contributes regularly regularly to all the series I do. Uh, her name is Kitty, and she shared a story about a boss she had that really likes blondes. And one thing I know about Kitty is that she's a brunette. So let's see where this goes. Hi, Jordan and Madeleine. It's Kitty from the UK. I know you're inundated with creep stories at the moment, but I have a boss creep story I wanted to share with you if you have time for it. Um, So I was working at um, quite a prestigious, very well-known UK organisation. I was 23 years old and I'd just been through a bit of trauma, just lost my dad. And uh, as I tend to when I go through kind of of incidents in life, I change my hair colour. So I'm naturally dark haired, but I bleached my hair blonde. Um, So anyway, I arrived in this office and the manager had a personal assistant who was a very efficient blonde lady. Um, He made explicit comments to her and also about her behind her back. Um, Not surprisingly, she decided to leave. Um, He put a lot of pressure on me to apply for the post, um, which I declined to do. Um, So the post was advertised and two candidates were interviewed for the final selection. When they came out of the office, the the whole office sort of said, oh, the the second lady was wonderful, wasn't she? She was so professional. She's fantastic. And uh, this man's response was, yeah, but she was a brunette. I'm hiring the blonde. Uh, So the blonde lady naturally got it. Anyway, by this point, I was so fed up of the harassment going on in the office. I dyed my hair back to um, my natural colour, very dark brown. So I came into the office the following morning and uh, he was sat there behind his desk and he turned to me and he said, oh my God, what have you done to me? And I just sort of looked at him and he said, um, oh, he said, when I fantasize about you now, I'm going to have to think of Ozzy fucking Osborne. So <laughs> I didn't stay there much longer. Anyway, thanks for a great show, guys. 
<laughs> I hate to laugh at that. Oh, what? <laughs> um oh but... <laughs> my god like we'll file him under men that should not be in any position of power ever yeah uh, to be that like you know to have um a, a preference uh to blonde women uh i don't think that's like incredibly uncommon like you've heard stories like that but to, for it to totally. be this almost like crippling disability for this man that he cannot right? exist with like brunettes around <laughs> and like to be so loud about it yeah it's like, like I, you you can't hire someone based on their hair color i believe yeah. that's illegal like, yeah and i just picture like you know the every friday's casual day at that office you can pay two dollars like you donate two dollars to some charity and you can you know wear a t-shirt and jeans to the office and every day he comes in with a shirt that says like you know blonde lover or something like he's <laughs> he just like wears it on his <laughs> sleeve um i hate that guy i'm glad kitty left and I hope that his last moments with Kitty were like forced to picture himself sleeping with Ozzy Osbourne. I would have found the <laughs> ugliest, most obnoxious blonde wig <laughs> and worn that to my last day. Oh, but you know, like what what Ozzy Osbourne are we talking about here? Because like twenty six year old Ozzy Osbourne is like ten mm, out of ten. It is. He was a hunk, eh? Right. Do you believe like... <laughs> he's still alive? Of everyone, it's like the fact that he's still with us. He's like, yeah, we're lucky, but man, he's lived. And, and... him and Keith Richards, I yeah. can't believe they're still kicking. But I'll tell you, Keith. <laughs> like... The difference though is Keith Richards within for, of the Rolling Stones. Within the last twenty five years, he hasn't aged a day. He's been True. equally this old for twenty five years. We're Ozzy. Decrepit. <laughs> yeah, we're Ozzy. Like if you see him now versus twenty years ago, like he is on a sharp decline. Um, that's true but also snorted a line of fire ants yeah so yeah. who would have thought he'd see damn near 80. <laughs> yeah oh man the uh the legends are aging but what a story thank you for contributing that kitty and i'm, I'm glad you left <laughs> let's go to something altogether different what do you think about an underwear thief Oh, these are always, I, I almost said good, but they're not good. They're just, they're classic, classic, iconic Perfect. creep stories involve the theft of underwear. That is something that like a lot of creeps have a problem with. You hear so many stories of stolen underwear, buying underwear. Uh, it's a thing. Oh, totally. Well, and actually the, <clears throat> the story that we originally started off with with the guy looking to buy feces mm -hmm. and the the girl replying was like is it porch pickup because i've always said i would totally sell my underwear you but why does this feel like an ad you bring it up so much you're waiting in my I, email I, if i was going to get offered <laughs> i don't want to ever see the person <laughs> like you have to pick it up and you get no photos <laughs> i don't want you knowing what i look like at all <laughs> okay well this next story i don't think there's any kind of consent to um have access to the underwear involved this is a story coming from a listener named frenny who had a rather uh, dumpster fire of an encounter with a creep involved in the theft of underwear. Listen to this one. Hi, Jordan and Madeleine. I love your podcast. I've been listening to it since the beginning. And I wanted to share a story about an encounter with a creep. I lived in Berkeley, California in 2005. And there was a guy who had been depositing women's underwear around our apartment building, like namely in the bushes below one of my neighbor's bedroom windows. Um, well, we assumed it was a guy, but um, we didn't know where the underwear exactly came from, but we thought maybe they were stealing them out of our laundry. Um, anyway, my neighbor said that she had seen a guy peering at her through her window next to the hedge where the underwear was found. Um, so she had a sarong hanging in the window as her curtain 
And I notice when I walk past to go in and out of the property down the driveway, her bedroom was light was on and you could clearly see an outline of her and a lot of detail um, in her room. So I thought, well, that's odd. She doesn't close her blinds. And uh, then there's underwear in, under the hedges. So I kind of put two and two together and I figured, okay, there's a creep. There's somebody hanging around staring in the window and getting excited. Obviously there's a connection with the underwear. So uh, my boyfriend and I are living together and he um, he's from Mexico originally. And uh, we started uh, just patrolling, you know, regularly around our property because we had multiple, um, there were multiple renters and we just kept an eye out because we didn't feel safe and we didn't feel safe for her as well. So one day, um, we came home from work. We were going to go back out to eat and we were walking past her window and we saw this young Hispanic looking male crouch down probably in his early twenties crouched down next to the hedge in the below her window, um, clutching women's underwear. <laughs> and my boyfriend tackled him and was yelling at him in Spanish. And I was just like, Oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. And he is yelling at him and holding him down. They're fighting. They're rolling around in the bushes. My boyfriend says, call 911. So I do, and I'm on the phone with the police and um, telling them what's going on, trying to be as fast as I can, and they're screaming, and, and like I don't know how long he couldn't hold him. And it went on for like 15 minutes almost before they got there. And then um, if they get there, and then, of course, um, they're checking his ID, um, but he apparently is an illegal, and um, so he has to get uh, taken into custody and then, you know, Basically, there will they will deport him over this, um, yeah. And it was just really intense and stressful. Um, but that's how it uh, ended up. Basically, he ended up taken away by the police. That was pretty creepy. And um, I'm glad that uh, we were able to apprehend him, and that my boyfriend was there, and that they could he could speak Spanish to him and tell him what that this was not okay in Spanish and also like ask him what the fuck his problem is. Um, but the guy didn't really have an explanation. He just kind of was, um, he just said that he, he, he was just sleeping there. He didn't do anything. Um, so, but anyway, we all know that that was not the case. Yeah. Uh, I, I don't, um, recommend confronting the creeps in the act if i see if i see someone like ducked down by a window surrounded by underwear the last thing i'm doing is going over there right <laughs> uh that's like my biggest fear too is having is like seeing someone peer through my window oh like a peeping tom that's so freaky as i sit here on a ground floor with a big window next to me well just like having someone that close to your house just there Mm -hmm. And it, and I also feel like there's a bit of a slippery slope where they start by peeking in your window and it's only like the next step is like breaking in and like taking your underwear. The next step is like breaking in when you're sleeping and touching yes. your hair. And Ugh. yeah, it's uh, I, I'm glad they got him, although like it could who knows you approach someone like that. They could have a knife or a gun or a, God forbid, like a dirty needle in their pocket. I was just going to say a needle. Yeah, which is worse. Yeah. Like, well, shoot you just, me you never know what you're before you, you never know me. what you're getting into so um but yeah like she said luckily he was there although i think my approach would have been uh watch from a distance and call 911 and maybe right. intervene if it escalates but i guess there's no is there immediate harm if you have a creep peering in your window probably masturbating with a bunch of stolen underwear like is that something where like you got to intervene like if he's jumping in the window, of course you go grab him and do what you got to do. But right, and the way she explained it, she's like they were screaming, and then the police <laughs> didn't show up for fifteen minutes. So I just pictured this like nonstop screaming for fifteen minutes. <laughs> oh yeah, that was a long fifteen yeah. minutes of like headlocking and being like, "What are you doing? 
I was sleeping on a bed of I women's would... underwear in a bush <laughs> <laughs> with your pants down. <laughs> I just, I don't know why this reminds me of it, but I used to work at Lacenza and my manager would call it the panty fort. <laughs> Well, so now I'm just picturing this guy in like a panty fort outside of <laughs> <laughs> this window. Um, that's funny. You, I, I don't know if you know this, but Handsome Aaron Airport also worked at La Senza. Really? Oh, besties. He, yeah, he worked at the stock room. So he knows like an incredible amount about women's underwear, which should be creepy <laughs> if he didn't have an explanation. But he could tell you all about the different styles and cuts. And it's it was like a fun party trick back in the day for him. Well, he was probably everyone's favorite coworker. Oh, I bet. Like, how yeah. could you? How could you not love working with him? At the, 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 the weird guy <laughs> in the back room. Yeah, he was, <laughs> he was the weird stock guy. <laughs> um, well, Frenny, we appreciate you listening. I love that story. What a roller coaster! That was a long fifteen minutes. Uh, your boyfriend <laughs> is a more man than I am for sure. You would have to be so sure that you were going to win and overpower seriously whoever you're tackling. Yeah, like I could have my for, wife for me like, at least. Jordan, go get him! Like he's being a creep. I'm, like, I'm not getting my ass kicked by, by the lunatic. You're like you go. <laughs> yeah, you go. <laughs> no, um, you. <laughs> yeah, no way am I running over there and getting embarrassed, strangled by stolen underwear. It, yeah kind of and push. you never know how long it's going to take for <laughs> for police to show up he's been choking my husband for 15 minutes yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um let's move on to another one this 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 creep in the bush if he served you a drink he probably drug it right he seemed the type yes okay most that, likely that is the segue to our next story a creep allegedly spiking a drink i think you may recognize this voice listen to krista's story hello jordan and madeline it's krista from regina um just finished listening to creeps and of course another story came to mind when the young lady talked about her experience in cancun so this goes back i want to say about 11 maybe 12 years ago I was on a trip to the Mayan Riviera with my mom and my two daughters. At the time, my daughters were 13 and 19, I think. And um, so anyways, we spent every day on the beach. And then around four o'clock, we would venture over poolside. And uh, we had met a number of different people. And uh, typically, I don't go in the pool. I like to be in the ocean, but I don't really go in the pool. However, everybody was in the pool and at the swim up bar and the bartender had invented this new drink called orange yum and everyone was enjoying and having drinks and it was all good. Uh, so anyways, I got in the pool with my mom and my daughters and just visiting with all these people and, um, someone handed me a drink because mine was close to being empty, which was like, okay, fine, whatever. Uh, fast forward about eight hours later, or pardon me, about five hours later, I wake up about eight o'clock, nine o'clock in my hotel room that I was sharing with my one daughter and my mom and my other daughter were in another room and I'm in my bathing suit and I'm in bed and my daughter like starts talking to me and I said like, where, what, what happened? Well, I had been drugged. So the person that passed me the drink drugged me. Um, with my mother and my daughters right there and in a crowd of people, fellow Canadians, uh, this person that we suspect was the culprit, um, was from Germany, nothing against Germans. I'm part German, but, uh, what kind of creep drugs someone period, but let alone a woman who is traveling with her mother and teenage daughters, um, Thank God I wasn't alone because um, the possibilities of what could have happened to me are endless and none of them good. So in any event, um, I don't think that you need to call upon the jury. There's no question in my mind that that guy was a creep and uh, yeah, just not, not, uh, not worth the skin that he has on his back. Just not a, not a good person at all. 
anyways, uh, thank you guys for what you do. I absolutely love your show. Love you, Madeline. Um, and uh, keep doing what you do. Take care. Bye-bye. I'll never understand the drink spiking phenomenon. I know that happens way more than anyone would think. But what does someone, like, what are they trying to do? First, I can't believe that Krista was featured on this episode because when we heard about the panty thief, I thought of her because she had a, a panty thief at one point. But anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, the whole the whole drink drugging thing, especially in in Krista's situation here, like there's a ton of people around and three out of those many people are like directly with her. So what did he think was going to happen? Mm -hmm. Like, you you shouldn't drug people at all. But what did you really think that that was that was going to turn out well for you? Like, why? I don't. Yeah, I don't understand what his motivation is, unless this person is just passing a bunch of people spike drinks, being like one of these are going to work out. It's like the shotgun Maybe. approach. Yeah. Mm, that's a, that is awful but like i can't and like you can't even fault krista for taking it because like growing up my mom drilled it into my head like don't ever take an open drink from a stranger at a bar anywhere always watch the bartender make your drink blah 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 but like oh i know damn well had i been in that pool and you know you're with a bunch of people and you're drinking <laughs> if a drink got passed to me i also would have taken mm -hmm. it been like yeah oh, bottoms up like one thing about Krista's telling of the story, I do enjoy that she made a point of being like, I usually don't go in pools. I prefer the ocean, but I did get in the pool and it's in, cause there's kind of a, 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 a narrative in the story of like, I did get in a pool one time and this is what happened to me. You know, like, it's just like to add the whole pool. This is why I don't go into pools. This is it. Like, of course. I'm, and she's never gone in a pool since. Probably not. <laughs> Um, well, I have been I've been turned off from resort pools ever since I was like 15 and we went to Mexico and I whatever. I was like, oh cool, like a swim up bar, right? But over the course of the day, I noticed the same guys sitting there all day and they never got out. And I was like, You're drinking a lot. Why aren't you moving? <laughs> Why aren't you getting up to pee? Oh, I get I it. I know you have to. <laughs> So I was like, yeah. yeah. Oh, there's not enough chlorine in the world. <laughs> like... uh, you know, the a, any public pool. Uh, yeah, I've gone in a few of them, but you know, you want to encounter a creep, just go to your local public pool, and I guarantee you, you will find one. <laughs> They're swim. It's the, the public pool is swimming with creeps. And what we say is, there's two people who ride bikes. There's people who are into exercise and fitness, and there are creeps. There are two people who swim in pools. There are people who are no. There are three people who swim in pools. Three types. There are people who are taking their kids to the pool. There are people who are into fitness and exercise, and there are creeps. That's right. That's <laughs> perfect. <laughs> um, let's hear about a creep that breaks into cars in Cape Breton. How about that? Oh, good old Cape Breton. Uh, do you know what I the, love these stories. Me too. Do you know what the Screaming Eagles are? No. Okay. That's the, our hockey team in Cape Breton. They're called the Cape Breton Screaming <laughs> Eagles. <laughs> but we call the, I, most people like colloquial, colloquially, they're known as the Screaming Seagulls because <laughs> Cape Breton, we have a, like in Sydney, we have a ton of seagulls all over the place because we're surrounded by water. There's this big white, ugly birds hanging around in parking lots, hoping for French fries. And so, but anyway, this story is, um, it's, we'll call it Lauren's texty thief outside the Screaming Eagles game. Listen to this one. Hi, Jordan and Madeline. This is Lauren from Sydney, Nova Scotia. Um, I have a bit of a funny encounters with creeps. Um, out of all my encounters with creeps, I decided to go for a funny one because I thought it would give you guys a chuckle. So essentially, um, a few years ago, me and my father went to a Cape Breton Screaming Eagles game. Um, and as anybody in the area would know, like yourself, Jordan, parking on those events is very difficult. So we parked a few streets up on Bentick Street and... Yeah, that sets the scene, I guess, for anybody from Sydney. 
Um, Bendix Street, for anybody not from Sydney, is, I guess, one of the more sketchier streets in the area. Um, definitely not a place you want to be alone at night, <laughs> uh, unless you're there with a purpose, I guess. So anyways, we get back to the car and my dad's cell phone was gone. I guess he forgot it in the car and forgot to lock the car. Um, not typically like him. It was an accident. Anyways, we get back. I said to my dad, you know what? I'm going to take a shot in the dark and text this phone, text your phone and see if we can get this phone back. Um, so anyway, I text the phone, whatever I asked to get the phone back and the person actually starts answering me, but not just that they started answering me. They started to tell me how beautiful I was and how they knew how beautiful I was because they were creeping through the pictures on my dad's phone. And they were so interested in me that they would like to take me on a date and they requested for me to add them on Facebook and gave me their full name. So not just a creep, but also a really stupid criminal. Anyways, lo and behold, we never got the phone back. I obviously never added this man on Facebook. Um, but the funniest thing about it was that about two, three months later, his name was in the paper for stealing credit cards and credit card fraud. So yeah, that's my encounters with a creep or one of my encounters with a creep, I guess. I really enjoy this series and all of your series, Jordan. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing more encounters with creeps. That's that's like a classic Cape Breton situation <laughs> playing up there. <laughs> that might be one of my new favorites. <laughs> I do so ridiculous. Yeah, and I believe every word of it. It's like it's so <laughs> Cape Breton. <laughs> I was ready for her to say like, and lo and behold, like I went to high school with this person. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I I love but, like him oh. unable to resist. Get me on Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> first and last name add me <laughs> yeah man Go what a on. mess um do you even waste your time reporting that guy to the police like i kind of feel like at that point the phone is a lost cause as is that person's entire life yeah oh absolutely and oh it's just the cherry on top seeing his name in the paper a few months later yeah certainly Be like i wonder if i could get that phone back now <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's in like an evidence locker yeah downtown somewhere <laughs> Oh uh, my god. Yeah, the street she's describing is uh yeah, certainly not a great place to be. So I'm not surprised something nasty happened there in that it was uh, a crime committed by a bumbling idiot. When she said, "It's not a street you want to be alone at, on at night." You go or in the day. <laughs> yeah, certainly. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> um oh, yeah, god. that was an amazing story. Thank you Lauren for reminding me why I moved away from Sydney. Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. <laughs> I'm still kind of hung up on the fact that the hockey team's name is the Screaming Eagles. It sounds like a drink or like a really bad shot. A Screaming Eagle. A yeah, scream. it does. Eh? I'm a Screaming Eagle. <laughs> yeah. it's. A, what would it be? It'd be like, you'd have to add salt in it because I, I don't yep. know why a Screaming Eagle, like just you'd have to be vile. Lemon. There's like lemon juice, salt. You light it on fire. <laughs> <laughs> like a flaming mo. Uh, um, uh, let's wrap this up with uh, a follow-up theory on a prior story. W one of the more memorable creep encounter stories we heard was the young woman who went to see a movie, Batman Ret or The Dark Knight. They went yes. to see it alone, and when they were sitting there randomly, someone came in. I think mid movie, sat like right next to them, and then started eating a bowl of soup in the movie theater. Uh, like. Bizarre and unusual. I suspect that maybe they were dreaming and the whole thing is made up. Um, but Mariah wanted to chime in and present her theory on what she believed was happening. Listen to this. Hi, Jordan. This is Mariah from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the U.S. Love your encounters with creep series. I actually am... Uh, sending this voice recording because I have a theory about the creepy movie theater soup guy from the story from volume nine. Picture it. You're a weird guy working at a movie theater in 2008, taking your 30 minute lunch break. You plop your can of soup in a bowl, give it a quick zap and sneak into a scarcely seated screening of the dark night. You've seen it 10 times already, but it's 
got a crazy fan base and was the most popular movie in years. You don't want to get in trouble if your manager looks in the theater. So you sit next to the single person. So if someone checks the theater at a quick glance, you look like you belong there. Off-putting? Absolutely. And rude, but maybe not creepy intent. Or he was a creepy suit pervert. 50-50 odds. Love the podcast. Thanks much. <laughs> I it, you never know. Yeah, that, that would make sense. That is uh, like the theory does hold water, but I am going to still lean towards creepy soup pervert. <laughs> if it was an employee, he would have been in uniform. Mm. You'd think. Yeah. But I guess you never know. I don't think it, <laughs> I think it's a from a, a quote to quote Spinal Tap. I think it's a mystery best left unsolved. Yeah, I think so. I just I want I'd like to know more details. Was it a glass bowl? <laughs> was it was it like one of those like instant instant noodle like plastic bowls <laughs> um <laughs> Tupperware, <yeah>. exactly <laughs> i i like this the image of him actually making the soup like i would like to think he took one bowl out that had like some noodles and like a cup bit of vegetables then he took out a separate thermos of hot water <laughs> and poured it over it stirred it around like made ramen sitting there and then it was really full so he had to like balance it yeah. on the way <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god you know what i'm these... just so glad that didn't happen to me <laughs> every one of these stories yes tonight was a, a doozy we had some good ones right we did uh, uh, it, there was the good the bad and the ugly that's for sure yeah and i'll tell you we have a whole bunch more so this is volume 11 i have a feeling by the and we're recording this on november 16th by the end of 2023 we'll have done at least volume 12 but I have a feeling end of 2024, we will do one of these a month is what we'll go for. So anyone listening, if you have, and I shouldn't say if, because I know you've encountered a creep. Anyone listening, go to nighttimepodcast.com slash contact and send Madeline and I a voice memo, letting us know about one of the many creeps that all of y'all have encountered. Because yeah, you're right. There's a hundred percent chance that everyone has encountered one, mm -hmm. at least once at least once all right well let's start wrapping this up madeline uh anything going on in your life that you're looking forward to or that you want to tease um not content wise nothing that i've been like working on i've just been working on preparing my home for another tiny human to live here mm -hmm. um and your saint of a husband like renovated a basement for you i uh oh patience of a saint that man yeah. but you like didn't, you didn't take me up on my offer what i wanted you to do was sit out like your can't turn your camera on and film and just be like honey i really think we need to get the bathrooms redone before the baby comes just see how he reacts see he like i don't think he would probably be at his computer and just like look at me and then look away <laughs> <laughs> he like wouldn't even engage <laughs> Yeah, that's probably what I do too. Like, get out of my face. <laughs> uh, well, Madeline, we are all very excited for you. I can't wait for the um, baby reveal. Is that what you call it? I guess. Yeah, baby reveal announcement. Yeah, one day we're going to log on and I'm going to have a little tiny human strapped think, to me. I think what's going to happen is one day I'm going to log on and I'll be like, shit, like we were, she was supposed to be here at 10. Like, where is Madeline? And then I text you and I don't get a response. And. So you never know. One Thursday, I might log on and be sitting in a hospital bed using hospital Wi-Fi. <laughs> but we'll see. <laughs> Don't do that. That sounds... Don't do that. <laughs> well, no. Madeline, let's wrap this up. We'll be back again soon. And thanks for another disturbing night uh, that will unsettle my sleep. Yes. Uh, you know what? All, almost all of these, um, I can't remember where it was said or who said it but somebody commented on maybe our last creep episode and said this should be changed to encounters with predators mm -hmm. and yeah um quite a few of them there's are a, borderlining on predator like the car the car rental plays those yeah. two are predators when, when i talked earlier about the different kind of um legal outcomes of whether or not they are creeps or not or and i um presented the idea that they could also just be douchebags i think if you have like kind of like the venn diagram of creeps or something they can either go in the direction of a predator or in the direction of a douchebag you know so That's it's right. kind of it's 
it's complicated, but we're we're doing the work here to understand what makes these people tick. Eh, and maybe we're not. I think we're just doing the work to show that uh, they're awful. I just and I think that there are no better judges than us. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're the people for this job. Thank you, Madeline. Oh, literally anytime. <laughs>I want to thank you for joining Madeline and I for this episode of Nighttime. Now we're going to start wrapping things up here, but before I do, let me give some thanks. First, a huge and sincere thank you to everyone who took their time to share their creep encounters with us. These stories serve as a great reminder to keep our eyes open and our wits about us. And to any other listeners out there who have a story to share, we're going to be doing a whole bunch more episodes in this series, and I'd love to feature your story. You can share it with me at nighttimepodcast.com slash contact. If you got something to share, go to the site now. The voice recorder is easy to use. And if you make any mistakes or misspeak, I'll make sure to edit it before it goes to air and ensure you're sounding your best. We can't wait to hear from you. Now I'm going to give a thanks to Monty Data, who contributes the music for this series, and LJ from the Dystopian Simulation Podcast, who provides the intro and outro voiceovers. And then lastly, but most importantly, a massive thanks goes out to each and every one of you listening to Nighttime, as without your interest and your support, this show would be as pointless as it would be impossible. And on the topic of support, let me thank the newest subscribers to the premium feed. Patricia, Finn, and Denise, I appreciate you. And for anyone else who'd like to support the show, you can help us out here in a variety of ways. First of all, a premium feed subscription costs just a couple dollars a month, and that money funds the creation of the show, but the premium feed also gives you the episodes two days early, gives them to you ad-free, and gives you access to a full back catalog of nighttime episodes. If that sounds like something you'd be interested in, you can go premium right now at patreon.com slash nighttime podcast. Even if you don't want to go premium, you can still help the show out by simply sharing this episode on social media and letting your like-minded friends know why they should be listening. If you have any story ideas, you want to get feedback on the show, or submit a question, comment, or theory to be aired in an upcoming episode, you can do all that and more at nighttimepodcast.com. We look forward to hearing from you. But until then, take care of each other, hug your loved ones tight, and let me know if you see anything weird. The Nighttime Podcast is written, hosted, and produced by Jordan Bonaparte.